This is a video about using Grumbler, which is a tool you can use to um, split up large groups of classes into smaller groups. So you can um, define a few conflicts based on gender, race, or any other thing where someone's from. And then you can uh, mix up the groups as much as possible so you get as much diversity in the groups as you like. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is go to um, Malcolm Sparrow's website. He's the one who created this. Uh, he works at uh, Harvard University. And um, you could either use this URL up here, or I've created a shorter one, tinyurl.com slash groupRumbler. That's what Grumbler stands for. And if you hit that, it'll come to the same site. Um, and the thing we have to do here is roll down and um, click to save the Excel file. Um, that this is the spreadsheet that he created that we're going to be using. So we'll just click it, and when it comes up, we're going to say we save. And then also the instructions for how to do that, from which I'm going to draw this whole video. Um, none of the credit belongs to me, all of it belongs to Mr. Sparrow. Um, I'm going to just alt click this because the way it pops up for me, I'll click will download that for me as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on the spreadsheet and it'll open up here in Excel. And this is what uh, Grumbler looks like. So let me uh, come to the top. You'll notice that there's a security warning and it says macro macros have been disabled. So I'm going to come here and enable this content to allow it to happen. And the first thing that will come up, it's the only thing that pops up like this. It's going to ask you what your username is, and that's, that'll just appear on the form, um, but really nowhere else. So you can put whatever you like. I'm going to put Brian for mine. Hit OK. And you notice the username will show up here on the form. Um, I'm also going to resize this so you can see it a little better. Basically, um, what this is composed of is three things. We have a main menu, as you see from the tab here. Well, there's a search engine, which is right now blank, and uh, the student's details. So this is, when you download the original one, it's, it has an example one with a uh, some fake data of a, uh, 49 students um, and based on various things we're going to divide them up into different groups. So I'll head back to the, the main menu. Uh, um, what we're seeing here is these are the things you can change on this page. You can change the gender balance whether you want it to be balanced meaning males and females to be evenly balanced as much as possible or you can cluster so they'll be together or you can just turn that off because you don't particularly care. So I'm, I'm going to leave it on balancing for now. You can also set the number of groups that you have. So right now that number is five. I'm going to leave that there for now. And there's a few other things down here where you can change um, the loop structure and status. And that's advanced, and I don't know too much about it. <laughs> it's, it's defined if you look in the uh, introduction document and scroll down to the bottom for the, the less frequently asked questions. I'll go through it, but basically we'll leave that just as it is. Notice here also that we have a, a, a status bar that tells us what we're, how we are doing in the process, and a few useful buttons here. Um, once we found, find searches, it'll be saved here, and we'll be able to see those things. And if we scroll down to the bottom, a couple of occasional use buttons, like erasing all the data, but that's kind of way down at the bottom because I don't want people to uh, use that by accident. So that's the main menu. The next thing we see is the search engine. This is where we'll see all results. results. We won't be able to edit or even copy and paste from this uh, menu at all. And then uh, this will fill up later, and it'll be more important. Um, just a note... Um, some of the back end things that are going on, and it'll go through all the different conflicts that people can have here, and it's advanced, there's nothing you'd ever have to go into, but just so you know it's there. And the third tab is the student's detail, so this is where we see the information that was uh, put in about the students. Last name, first name, gender, and these are required. If you want to have something that starts with an M is always going to be male, something that starts with anything else is going to be female, so you can put MF, MW, male, female, um, but just make sure you have something here, because if, you, if one of these is blank, um, then it won't count up the students, right? And so what they have is fa a few different things here um, that they want to to say are they want to separate people by. So, you know, there's a lot of people from different countries. Most of them are from the United States. It's going to be hard to separate those into groups, but at least as few as possible in one group. Um, but people from the Philippines, there aren't that many, so they should be able to be separated out. Canada, there's, uh, there's more, but Netherlands and Nigeria, there are fewer. Um, we also have a 
a different place where they work. So we try not to get two people from the Food and Drug Administration, for instance, in the same group. And then also, we, these are representing dorm rooms. So two people who have the same value here for um, a dorm that they're living in should also be separated since they'll probably mix anyway. This is a good way of mixing up the groups. Um, two of the columns are going to appear on our final worksheet. And so we just copied, copied and pasted those over from, from uh, these columns over here the country and the organization and these are you can set these to be whatever you want you can change these things to be whatever you want to call them and for whatever makes sense for your groups uh, finally at the top here we have the weights so if we wanted to make one of these sorts of, of uh, separations more important than another then we could say that country is more important so we'll give that a higher value and then we can go from there all right so in this example, what we're trying to do is have a gender balanced group with a fictional class of 49 people, and they're going to be together for four days, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And on Monday and Tuesday, we want to have seven groups divided into seven groups, and uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we want to divide them into 12 groups. So that is the example demo that we're going to work through right here. So you'll notice that uh, of the different conflicts here, you can have five different types of conflicts that you're um, dividing up your group into. Um, two of these haven't been used at all. But say that there was some sort of ad hoc one that you wanted to add that you knew these top three students here um, all liked uh, opposing soccer teams is the example they give. Then we could say soccer conflict, put that there, uh, copy and paste that two other times for the top three, and then each of these groups, if possible, all these three people will be kept apart because of their soccer conflict. So as long as they're identical things, then they'll try to separate them into different uh, groups. So the next thing we're going to do is click over to the main menu tab, and um, we're going to get this started. First we're going to load student data into the search engine, and now you can see it's all loaded up, and then the status bar tells us the student data has been imported, and it's asking us make sure you want to, that number of groups uh, uh, you know, you don't want to change that. So actually, we do want to change the number of groups. We said we wanted to have seven groups, so we'll change that. And then we can click Conduct New Search. So, and then the status bar will go through various different things. And we did find um, our target score, best so far, and current score. Um, and now it's saying 100, because it's saying that there are at least um, 100 conflicts, and they did find one that, that uh, matched that, and so they're going to go with the current score. Um, and so it has separated into groups, and we can check out to see how that looks. So if we go to the search engine tab, we can see how it divided up these people into groups. You notice that everyone here is from, uh, as much as possible, a different country, and they're all from different organizations, and also the different um, dorms that they're living in. Also, the people with soccer conflicts are also being separated out here. So you look this over and you decide whether you think this is uh, valid. And I don't know about this one. This one has um, a bunch of people from the United States and Canada, but no one else from another foreign country here. So one thing you could do is go into this uh, empty conflict row here, and for everyone who was not from Canada and the United States, in the student details tab, you could put a little F there, and then that would help you divide those people up, because those are people who are who are from foreign places other than the United States and Canada. But say this is good enough for what we're trying to do, then we can come back to the main menu and say that we're going to record this best solution found. Um, then you can go and uh, conduct another search. So by doing this, it's remembering this first time that you've done it. Um, and in the search engine, uh, if you go to head to, to the L column, you can actually see the first time you did it, it remembers that, so it doesn't do the same thing twice and you can conduct another new search with that same thing because we're trying to find another group of seven. So this will take a little while. They found the target score. Head over to the search engine and we'll see how they divided them up this time. So, looks pretty good. And we're going to record that second best solution found. And we just keep doing this, but uh, for the next two we were going to try to find groups of 12. So we can change that down to 12 hit conduct new search and notice it's coming up with a different number the target score here is 44 instead of 100 um, and they were able to find 44 and so we head over here and now we see that they're separated into many more groups or 12 groups this time those look good to us so come down and record the best solution found and we'll run it again
taking a little longer this time. You can see it calculating. And it found something that it thinks is pretty good. So we'll come back here, you look it over, think it looks okay, and then come back here and record the best solution found. Once we're done, you can come up here and hit Prepare Group Lists and Master List. Click on that. You can see that it's creating the results file, and it's been created. Now down in your taskbar, it should already be open, actually, so you can come down. I'm going to go to my taskbar and open it up, and here are the Grumper results. So this is the, the Group 1 list that we created, the Group List 2, Group List 3, and Group List 4. This was the student's detail page, so in case we need to save this and check it later, or um, do some way we can copy and paste this back um, into uh, if we wanted to sort of recreate from here again. And finally, this is a very useful master list of assignments. So it's telling you for each student um, what their full name is, their organization, their country, and also what number group they were in for each one. So you can sort this in various different ways, and it's sort of a master list. Um, and that's basically it. You can then use this, this is a demo, but you can go and delete the um, student data from yours, um, save it as a master, and put, paste in your own information, put in your own different uh, categories that you want for conflicts, and you're ready to go. For more information, of course, you can see the instruction file that, that comes with there, and this is just a, a nice visual overview, but um, it's, it's taken directly from the instructions, and there's more to it there, too. They talk about how you can prepare a master copy, how you can paste in some of your own data, um, some frequently asked questions, and some less frequently asked questions. Um, anyway, thanks very much to uh, Mr. Sparrow, who put this all together, and thanks for watching.